Hello everyone, this is chapter 9, production and cost in the long run. No matter how a firm operates in the short run, its manager can always change things at some point in the future. That some point in the future is what we refer as the long run. Long run is a period where both capital and labor, labor are variable. In the short run, we have at least one factor of production or input that is fixed, that was capital. In the short run, labor was variable. But in the long run, you can vary everything. You can choose whatever plant size you want. So let's get started. This is our learning objectives. So in this part, we will learn about, in part one, we'll learn about graphing a production isoquant and discuss the properties of isoquant. So what is an isoquant, right? And then we'll move on to the isocost curves. Then we'll learn about maximization, how to find optimal input combination. And then we'll learn about firm's expansion path, okay? And how it relates to a firm's long run cost structure. Then we'll learn about calculating long run total, average, and marginal cost curves. This is actually pretty easy, just like the short run. And explain how variety of forces affect long run costs. We will learn about scale economies, economies of scale, scope, learning, and purchasing economies. And at the end, we will learn how short run and long run cost curves are associated. Let's get started. This is part one. We will learn about isoquants. Production isoquants is our focus in part one. In the long run, all inputs are variable. So labor and capital can be adjusted. And isoquants are used to study production decisions. So what's an isoquant? coming up. An isoquant is a curve showing all the possible input combinations, labor and capital combinations, physically capable of producing a given level of fixed level of output. Isoquants are downward sloping, so if greater amounts of labor are used, you can free up some capital, so less capital is required to produce a given output. An isoquant map is a graph showing a group of isoquants. So let's take a look uh, of one isoquant. Again, we can represent production function as an iso uh, with isoquants. For instance, for a specific value, let's say I want to produce 100 cars uh, per day. So I can put 100 here and I can find different combinations of labor and capital that exactly produces me 100 cars per day. So production function can be represented by isoquants. So isoquants look like this. So in the y-axis, I have capital. This is the number of units of capital used. Start from zero, increases as we go up. And the x-axis is the labor. So Q0 represents a level of quantity. So it could be such that I want to produce 100 uh, motor vehicles okay so let's pick something ford uh ford 150 trucks right so i want to produce 100 units from one uh, production factory so how do we do this you can use different combinations of capital and labor to get this unit you can hire lots of labor here lots of labor and only few units of capital that produces 100 units, or you can hire a lot of capital and relatively, oops, relatively fewer workers, right, to produce the same unit. An isoquant shows possible combinations of labor and capital that would produce exactly the same level of output. So this oh, over this curve, I am sorry for that. Over this curve, I'm producing exactly 100 units. Iso. Uh, means equal quantity is a quantity so you're producing the same quantity okay isoquant or constant output curves so again here point a i'm using more capital less labor point b i'm using less capital more labor but i am still producing the same level of output an isoquant shows possible combinations of again labor capital that would produce the same output i am just reminding you over and over again because it is important a and b both produce q0 let's say 5000 units of cookies per day i have a bakery okay 
And what are the properties of the isoquants? They are downward sloping. Okay, that means actually if you use more labor, you can uh, use fewer capital and produce the same output. Slope of the isoquant, delta K. So this is delta K, right? Delta K. Slope of the isoquant, delta K over delta L at this uh, segment. All right, so this is... I apologize, that's my dog. <laughs> um, so this is rise over run, right? The slope of an isoquant is going to be negative of the marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital. Isoquants, if we draw all of them, there are infinite number of isoquants here. They do not intersect at all. And higher the isoquants, higher the output. So maybe this is 6,000 units here. This is 5,250, I don't know. Higher isoquants refer to high, uh, correspond to higher output. Okay, so I'm going to. So for instance, Q1 corresponds to a higher level of output. I am producing more now. And they are convex to the origin. So according to the origin, if you look at with respect to origin, they look like bowl facing away from the origin. So this is what we call diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution. It comes from the slope of this isoquant. We'll talk about it. So slope of an isoquant, we said that slope of an isoquant is equal to delta, delta K rise over run, right? Delta K over delta L. This is going to be negative of marginal product of labor uh, divided by marginal product of capital. So, and this is my derivation uh you don't have to memorize this but i just want you to understand everything comes from math okay so delta q so let's see if i am producing uh this q0 but i'm using this combination so i'm using combination a loss of capital fewer labor I want to move for some reason to point B, okay? Let's say labor got cheaper. I don't know. I just want to move to point B, A to B. So this movement, um, this movement can be characterized by folks, this um, mechanics, okay? So from A to B, you are basically losing delta K, okay? I lose delta K, this much delta K, right? How many, however many, change in capital. And each labor produced marginal product of capital and PK. So I'm losing this much output. Marginal product of capital. So from moment from A to B, I am actually losing, right, delta K times marginal product of capital. And at the same time, from A to B, this downward movement and then this horizontal movement. So this horizontal movement is an increase in labor by delta L, delta L times marginal product of labor equals to what? So at the end of this movement, change in output due to change in capital, this vertical movement, change in output due to change in capital, this horizontal movement, the change in my output needs to be exactly equal to zero because this is by definition isoquant same quantity, right? So if we rearrange this, what we get is delta K over delta L, which is the slope of the isoquant, is negative of marginal product of labor divided by marginal product of capital. You can also use total differentiation from calculus math. So change in quantity, total differentiation requires change in output with respect to labor this is the total differentiation rule delta here this is lowercase delta is for literally for this delta change operator but this is more like infinite small change i do not wish to go into more details of calculus but this is change in output when you change labor times how much labor we lost right Sorry, how much labor we increased. This is the change in output when we change the capital by infinite small unit and how much unit of capital we 
lost or exchanged for more labor so by definition change in quantity is going to be zero on an isoquant so as a result you can write this down and these guys folks change in quantity when you increase labor by one unit by definition is uh, marginal product of labor this is marginal product of capital so we got the same thing either using calculus calculus or simple um this is like common sense right looking at the this uh isoquant graph so if you rearrange this you will find delta k over delta l which is the slope right rise over run is equal to negative of marginal product of labor divided by marginal product of capital so this is called marginal rate of technical substitution so, so the slope of the isoquant slope of the isoquant will be equal to the negative of the marginal rate of technical substitution we'll talk about that in a second so this is a typical isoquant map right capital labors here so one possible combination is where we produce 50 uh, when we produce 100 units of output by using 50 units of capital and 15 workers or you can produce the same thing using 40 units of capital and 20 workers okay another option is producing it with 20 units of capital and 40 units of labor or at an extreme very labor intensive 10 units of capital and you need now 75 workers so i just want to show you something that property of the slope going uh, smaller or diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution absolute value of the slope of this line is going uh, slower aka this isoquant is becoming flatter okay the slope becomes flatter so how does it work from 50 to 40 okay this is a negative 10 unit k decline okay so you had to add five units of labor to actually achieve that but once you have a lot of labor already you're in point a to free up 10 units of capital okay you require now 35 workers labor so what's happening here here to be able to free up 10 capital i can just add from five labor workers all right and achieve the same output but when you have already a lot of labor right at point a again i'm freeing up 10 units of capital if you want to do that you have to add many more workers to achieve the same output we'll talk about that in a second all right so marginal rate of technical substitution is a slope of an isoquant and it measures the rate at which the two inputs can be substituted for one another along an isoquant while maintaining constant level of output so this is labor and capital substitution right okay so marginal rate of technical substitution is negative or we put a negative sign because this is already negative to get a positive sign delta k over delta l the minus sign is added to marginal rate of substitution uh is a because this is a negative number and we want marginal rate of substitution to be a positive number so this is negative negative positive all right marginal rate of substitution can also be expressed as the ratio of marginal product of labor divided marginal product of capital oops all right so a labor is substituted for capital right so you are hiring loss of labor here's the rule when you hire more and more labor marginal product of labor will decline and capital's marginal product will rise as a result marginal rate of substitution will decline let's write it down again marginal rate of technical substitution is the rate of technical substitution is the negative of delta k change in capital divided by delta l okay which is also equal to marginal product of labor divided by marginal product of capital 
Okay, so let's take a look at this again. So let's say we are, I'm going to call this point X. Um, this is T. Let's say we are moving from X to T, right? So the marginal rate of technical substitution in the segment, right? X to 2 segment, marginal rate of substitution here is, marginal rate of technical substitution is going to be negative of negative k. So what is it? We have lost from x to t. We are losing 10k. So negative, negative 10 divided by, right, here from x to t, you're increasing labor by 5 units plus 5. So it's going to be marginal rate of technical substitution will be 2. What does this mean in English? This means that every unit of labor added, for every unit of labor added, 2 units of capital can be discharged to keep the level of output constant. So you want to add 1 unit of labor, you can discharge two units of capital. That's nice. You're keeping the output level constant. But as you add more and more labor here, right? You are now right here. Let's say you're at point A. You want to move to point U, okay? So as you already have a lot of labor, let's calculate marginal rate of technical substitution in this segment, right? From A to U. So now we're calculating A to U. That's the slope in that segment. This was the x to t. So I'm moving from x to t. In this segment, delta negative of delta k. So this is again negative 10. Negative 10 divided by change in labor. So to be able to free 10 capital, now you have to add 35, 75 minus 40, 35 units. Okay, so this is going to be negative, uh, negative, negative, positive, 2 over 7. Okay, so 2 over 7, basically if you grab your calculator, 2 over divided by 7 is about 0 0.285. Okay, alright, so... What does this mean? This means that if you want to, you already have a lot of labor, you increase your labor employment by one more unit, you can now only free 0 0.285 capital. Look at the diminishing. Your ability to free release capital has gone down. This is what it calls to have. This is what it means to have a uh, diminishing margin rate of substitution. So... You want to keep the same output level. We are on the same isoquant, right? You increase the labor by one unit. You could free two capital. Awesome. I'm saving money. But if you already have a lot of labor, you want to increase your labor by one more unit. You can only release about one quarter of capital. So this concludes part one. I'll see you in part two, folks.